post-spawn smallmouth time. We're in Northwestern Ontario. I'm Bill Spicer, this is the new Fly Fisher. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Northwest Ontario Tourism, GoFishingOntario.com, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Rio Products, Superfly, fly fishing made easy. Ontario's sunset country, with 70,000 lakes, rivers and streams, there's no better place to go fishing. Our sunset country destination this week is Dog Lake Resort. Dog Lake is legendary for its smallmouth bass. The hundreds of shoals, reefs and shallow bays are ideal habitat for smallmouth. Pound for pound, the smallmouth bass is the scrappiest fish of all. My guide for this week is longtime guest to Dog Lake Resort, Jim Schaffhauser. Jim has been a return guest to the lodge for the last 27 years. His knowledge of the lake will be paramount to a successful trip. Well, I chase temperature no matter what I'm fishing. When I'm fishing walleyes, I chase temperature. I look for the warmest water. When I'm chasing smallmouth like we were this week, uh, we're always looking for that temperature where there's where there's feed, the the uh, the leeches are coming up out of the mud, the warmer the water gets. Uh, the temperature, I think, is absolutely critical to, to everything that we're going to fish for. Looking at a map of Dog Lake here, the resort is right here. Now, Jim says we have to find warm water in order to find smallmouth bass, and he figures it's right at the top of the lake here, about a 20-minute boat ride. We're going to fish the back bays, because they warm up first, and Dog River itself. And hopefully, if we're lucky, We'll find a topwater bite. Yep. Oh, <laughs> that was a big fish. <laughs> There's some big ones here, I'm telling you. Well, that's beautiful looking water with that yeah. rock like that in the sunshine. Well, there's a bit of a point there. Uh, we're only in six feet out here. Yeah, and in, in, into about two to three feet over there, yeah. right? Oh. Got him. Yep. That, I didn't even get a chance to, to pop it. You didn't even pop it. That's a nice one, too. That's yeah. Too bad. Oh, yeah. Oh, big <laughs> fish. That's nice. You want me to net that fish? Now we're we're in a we're in a shallow bay, and Jim tells me you got to find as close to 65 Fahrenheit as you can because we are early in the season. Out in the main lake, it's it's down um, under 60 degrees, and the fish are just not on. So you find these back bays that uh, have warm water. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. That's a really nice fish. Ready? Oh yeah. Excellent, excellent. Oh my. There you go. Nice typical dog leg smallmouth. Yep. Gave me a great fight on a popper. Find water in the 65 degree Fahrenheit area, which is about 18 degrees Celsius. So I'll let him go. Okay, and away it goes. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I love popper fishing. When you get the right conditions, like I have right now, we're in a protected bay, so there's not much ripple on the water. 
The fish are, are attracted to it. We're in shallow water, finding that 65 degrees, which is important, and they're active here. Further out where it's deeper, they're not active. They're active back here. They're feeding heavily. It's post-spawn. They're out feeding heavily after the spawn itself. So we're looking for cruising fish or, or any kind of structure, be in rocks, weeds, anything like that. We do the American plan, which includes your boat motor, gas, bait, accommodations, uh, three square meals a day. Uh, we can also offer a guide service uh, for an additional cost in that package, but we do do the full meal deals here. So our cabins uh, range in uh, sizes that uh, sleep too comfortably all the way up to a couple cabins that'll sleep 12 comfortably. So there's no limit on group sizes. Uh, we can work in groups of uh, 20, 25, up to 45. And certainly if you're just coming by yourself, we're happy to have you. March tends to be the prime booking season. So if we can, uh, if we can get most people in before March, that's uh, gonna make it easier for me to accommodate the people that uh, wanna be able to get in. And, if your holidays are flexible, you may have uh, the opportunity to book a little later, but March of the year prior is uh, usually what I'm after. Well, we're just gonna fish this, this whole side all the way up this bay. And there's a lot of logs and big boulders that come out and we can see them. And, and uh, we'll just move along and find the good looking structure and then we'll stop and fish it a little bit. And there's fish on it, we'll stay a couple minutes. And then as they slow down, we'll just keep moving along. We'll find a little bit of warmer water. There was actually a little cold pocket there. Now it's back to 63, so it'll be nice. This whole shore is the same all the way down, so it'll be a good day. That was good. That was good. You have a rise, and I was sure that he missed the fly completely and he didn't taste the hook. So you put it back and see if he's still active, and he was. Yeah. Good fish, too. Boy, smallmouth, they, they just fight. What did you call him, Jim? Little balls of hate. Little balls of hate. <laughs> Me, my brother, who named that. So I'll give him credit for that. <laughs> A little ball of hate. Oh, nice fish too. Nice fish. Chartreuse popper. It's in the shallows, that's why I've stayed with a popper. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Ooh, just as I as I reached for him, the uh, the popper popped out. But yeah, that's that's a great fish. Inside tight conditions against the rocks, weeds. These are post-spawn smallmouth bass, so they're feeding heavily right now. It's, it's, this is really, really incredibly good bass fishing. At this particular time of year, the bass have finished spawning. They've come off the beds and now they're feeding heavily, but they're still in the shallows because of, of the water temperature. Jim said, looking for 63 to 65 degrees uh, of Fahrenheit water temperature, and that makes them active. So what well, we found it, and it's happening. The equipment for Dog Lake Resort and their smallmouth is quite basic. Uh, most people have them. They're nine foot, number six weight rods. Mid flex, you don't need anything heavy or anything like that, just mid flex, nine feet uh, fits the bill fine. Now, the reels, the fish here get quite large, so I would have a, a quality reel with a good drag system. It can be large arbor in this case, or spindle, doesn't matter, but it's the drag system you need because the fish can be quite large here. This has a floating line on it, but it's a specialty floating line. It's a bass tapered floating line and it's meant to turn over heavy, wind resistant flies easier. You uh, put a regular trout line on there and you're gonna have difficulty. So a bass taper is what you want. On this reel, I have an intermediate sinking line because we're dealing at this time of year in shallow water, so I don't have to have it sink very fast. But if you come later in the year and the fish have moved out to deeper water, 
you will want a full sinking line. So basically, that's your equipment in a nutshell. You gotta put it tight to the cover. The stump over to my right here, that's where he was, right at the base of it. Oh, real nice fish. Yeah. Woo wee. They are beautiful in the water. Yeah, he just got him. The purchase is just in the lip there. Try to get them up to the net as soon as I can. Thank you. That's awesome. Ah, oh, there we go. Rod down. Just real light purchase right there in the in the top lip. But uh, not overly big, but oh man, well, 14, 15 inches. That's pretty good. I like that. Again, it's post spawn. They're cruising, they're, they're sticking close to cover, but they're feeding heavily right now. And this is what you can get at this time. It's mid-June. For those in Southern Ontario, this is open all year round here. Bass season is all year, so you can come in and fish at this time of year and uh, have yourself just one of the best times you'll ever have bass fishing. The setup I used this week was really quite simple. For my poppers, I had my specialty floating line, which is a bass tapered floating line, and then I attached a nine foot tapered leader down to 13 pound test, or 1X tippet. That I find helps turn over the popper a little bit easier, so that's basically what I use, nine foot tapered leader, then my popper. Now for subsurface, I have my sinking line, but then I use a straight piece of three to four feet of 15 pound tippet. That's all I did. Uh, it keeps it down in the, in the strike zone longer if you have a shorter leader. If you have a longer leader, the, the fly tends to rise a little bit. And I wanted it down in the kill zone a little better. So that's it. It's a simple, basic setup. There he is. There we go. Oh, no. You missed it. That's a big fish. That is a big fish. Oh, he got him again. Got him that time. I didn't think he tasted it. Oh. <laughs> Good fish. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's a nice fish too. I better get him on the reel, this one. Just trying to get him on the, whoa, yeah. Have I got him? <laughs> this is a real leaper. <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, kick in. All right. Oh man, is that a big fish? That trolling motor is on anchor. Oh man, that is a tank. That's a tank. Coming your way now. Oh, great job. Great job. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, he inhaled that fish. I got the hook out. And you cannot beat that kind of smallmouth bass fishing. That is, again, 17, 17, maybe a little better. Wonderful, wonderful fish. Let's let him go. And away it goes. <laughs> what a great day. What a great day. There's no better way to spend a day than fishing and catching big fish. <laughs> Nothing better. <laughs> I love my job. There, woo, that was. Never touched it, so I wonder if you can get it again.
There, got him. That first fish came back. Yeah, nice fish. Oh yeah. Boy, you got some quality fish in this lake, Jim. Yes, we do. I'm telling you, some quality fish. Look at that. It's not big. Yeah. He's angry, I can tell you that. <laughs> little balls of anger. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a little guy. Yeah, there we go. That's a little guy. Okay. Yeah. Take him out there. Smaller one, but he, he struck about five minutes ago and missed. So we moved on, and I'll put him back in the water now. We moved on, and I got another strike over here. Missed him, went farther up, and then I said, after about five minutes, I'll go back to where that first fish had hit, and he was ready to hit again. Generally, if you do that, you give him a little bit of a rest, go back, they'll, they'll come up again, and that one did. Okay, got him. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Better maybe get him on the on the reel. It's always smart to get on the reel if you can. <sighs> then he fights the rod, not the line. He's bigger oh, than he thought. Bigger than he was. I thought. Yeah. He's a lot bigger than he thought he was. Yeah. All right, you ready? The water, the water's pretty dark here. It's hard to see them right away. It's a nice fish. Yeah. Oh, ah, very good. Very good. I thought he was a small fish, but actually he's he's quite nice. And he wanted that bad. He wanted it real bad. There we go. Very nice. Just Very a week nice. ago, those fish had. Yeah, like big bellies. Big yeah. baseball bellies. This, this is a spawned out. Yeah, just fresh fish. Whew. <laughs> when you come to a new lake, Try to educate yourself as the natural forage that the fish is eating. In the case of Dog Lake, there's either minnows, which would be shiners, crayfish, or leeches. And at this particular time, Dog Lake leeches are coming out of the mud uh, in, in big quantities, and the fish are queuing in on them pretty, pretty actively. They got two colors. They got a black, and they got an olive leech here. So in my case, I decided woolly buggers would be the best searching pattern when I started. I have some black woolly buggers and I have some olive woolly, woolly buggers. I'm trying to match the hatch. We were fortunate though to find that we had excellent top water conditions. The wind was low, very little ripple on top, and the fit, we felt the fish were still in, in shallow, feeding up heavily after their spawn. So I decided to go with poppers. Now, the particular poppers that I chose were bright in color because the water here is turbid. It's, uh, what I mean by that, it's kind of uh, uh, rusty colored because of the minerals in the water itself. So you only got about three feet of visibility. So I decided a popper that moves a lot of water with a nice concave lip and bright in color was the, what I started with. And it paid off with almost within five minutes. Later on the day, as the sun got higher, I went with a little less bright. I went with a yellow popper, and they really, really liked it. The third popper I have here is called a, a flip-flop popper, and it's just made with the flip-flops that we used to wear as kids. And it's just really interesting looking, lots of legs, and bass are curious a lot of times. They'll eat that. My last popper is a slider. Why I would use a slider? Well, not in this particular lake because I, 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 the water was too turbid. I feel in a, in, a, in a clear water situation, the slider is better because it doesn't 
spook the fish, they can see it clearly, and it makes a nice wake when you pull it across the top. And that's the reason I chose these poppers. I kept it to the basic four. And I didn't even get to pop it. I knew there was something there. Rock points, you never go by a rock point. Never go by a rock point. Oh, good fighter too, good fighter. Oh. And when you're fishing poppers, that happens a lot. It just sits there, and before you can even pop it, they got it. This guy wanted it bad. Ooh, that's, oh, that's another hog. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Ready? I don't want to do that. There we go. Oh, good man. Yep. That's a nice fish. I've had a great time this week at Dog Lake Resort. I'd like to thank Paul Del Pino for inviting us and Jim Schaffhauser for guiding us. For more information on this show and others in our series, visit us on the web at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines. We'll see you next week. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Northwest Ontario Tourism, GoFishingOntario.com, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Rio Products, Superfly, Fly Fishing Made Easy.